Hello and welcome to Doc Play's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at metal reactivity and importantly we're going to be looking at iron and the process of rusting and prevention. So by the end of today's session you should be able to do the following. Describe how rust is formed and explain two different methods for rust prevention. So, here we've got a picture of one of the Iron Men statues on Crosby Beach and here you can see he's a, a statue predominantly made from iron and he's turned a brown colour. The metal iron to start off with is grey and shiny and then as it starts to corrode it forms a different compound uh, when it's reacted with oxygen and water and forms this brown, red, crumbly substance which is now no longer any use. So the rust that we describe, which is red and, and crumbly, is a special word which describes hydrated iron 3 oxide. Iron 3 oxide. And it is very particular for iron and we don't describe any other metal that corrodes as rusty. So all other metals we describe as corroding. So how does it work? Well iron, as we have here, reacts with oxygen and water. We have to have both of these things present and combine together to form hydrated iron oxide. The important thing we need to know then is that hydrated iron 3 oxide is our word for rust and that we require oxygen and water. We may be able to come up with a variety of different ways that we could actually test for this and do an experiment to check this was okay. So we'll do this in class but we can see here we'll do an experiment where we could simply put in an iron nail we could add air and water in this example on the left so number one we could remove some of the air by putting an oil seal on the top, number two, and by adding something like calcium chloride, which is a dehydrating agent, we can have air and no water, and then we can observe the results from that. The one, presumably, which rusts the most is going to be the situation where we get iron, oxygen and water. So, preventing rust is really important because the rust is not a very useful form of iron and if it degrades into the rust then typically the machinery that we make out of the iron becomes useless. So we need to look at different ways of trying to prevent rust and as you see here we've got some images which describe uh, the use of iron and there are different ways of stopping the rust. We've got two key ways. We've got one which is a barrier method and two, which is a sacrificial method. And we'll look at both of those in turn. So barrier method. Barrier method is going to stop water and oxygen getting to the metal. So you physically put something in the way. The way we can do this is we can do painting. So this bike here has got a coating over the whole bike. And it's good for big and small structures and it can also make something look nice too. So it's good for um, making your bikes look good and people want different looking bikes. The other method here is using grease or oil. And this is particularly useful if you've got anything with any moving parts. So we do use those on bikes if you think you might have a chain. Or perhaps a car engine where paint wouldn't be any good. But the lubricating properties of the oil and the grease make it a suitable method. 
The second method is called a sacrificial method. And we'll look at two ways that it can be done. We could cover something completely in a more reactive metal. So, for example, zinc. And we could take zinc, which is more reactive, than iron and therefore if we got a scratch on our car let's say if we scratch the car the thing that's going to corrode first is the zinc now often you might cover this again So, sacrificial method, we could cover completely in a more reactive metal like zinc. And the more reactive than iron the zinc is, therefore the zinc reacts first. The other way, and this is an example here, is the bottom of a boat. It's the propeller of a boat, we use a sacrificial anode. So, a sacrificial anode. And in this instance, large blocks of more reactive metal are used. Again, zinc can be used. And these react instead of the iron. And again, that is because the zinc is more reactive than the iron and therefore reacts. So we've seen our video here on metal reactivity, on iron, rusting and prevention. You should now be able to do the following two things. Describe how rust is formed and also explain two different methods for rust prevention. Bye for now.